I sell to that point three times. The first time, uh, my autonomy with my boat is about seven kilometers, and it was 10 kilometers. So I came back pretty much no battery at the end. I'm ready and I came from Beaver which is way way back there on the second trip I planned better uh, the wind and the tide and I continued the exploration of the sandbar before just before I left I noticed little white picket sticking up the, at the beach far away so I took a walk there and I uh, saw this water for dike but I had to go tide was uh, rising fast so I took a few pictures I was able to make it back but also borderline I need to come back one more time and we are really late in the fall and I want to buy another battery fix the brushes on the engine and calculate the tide very good and we had a lucky weekend it was a nice weather when i landed on your soil i said I shall return. Yeah. Tonight, I repeat those words. Yeah. 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 Nothing is more certain. I shall return. Yeah. 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 I'm going straight out toward Monash Point. This is a uh, Port Gasparo Point, and this is Gasparo River going into Port Elgin. Okay, I gotta put the rock there, move the rope a bit closer to the shore. Uh, on sand right here, and the boat's gonna be here for the until uh, mid afternoon. We'll try to fly a kite this afternoon to see if I can take a picture of that wharf that I seen last week. Okay, I gotta put the rock there, move the rope a bit closer to the shore, uh, on sand right here, and the boat's gonna be here for the until uh, mid-afternoon. And I'm gonna explore the shore, mostly the sand side, and also we'll try to fly a kite this afternoon to see if I can take a picture of that wharf that I seen last week. So the situation here is just a bit deeper there so I'm gonna wait a few minutes so I can cross I don't want to get my foot wet. Okay, the rope is attached to a flat rock. I see a few flat rock along the shore and a few there and the wharf is just over there. So that could be a dike here. There's line of spade. And now it doesn't look, you look at the sea right now, but 
we go back a few hundred years, this marsh was extending. This is the leftover of the marsh. It was extending way out. So things change. And the erosion exposed the work of the settlers. And somebody carried those stones there for some purpose. I don't think it was a ship ballast because they're pretty big, but we'll see today. That's a spade. Okay, uh, one drainage, two, and three. You can see the work of the spade. What? Two spade width. One and two. And the bump is where the clay broke uh, when the um, spade was moved forward. That's how they break it. This is one spade width. And there's another one there. So they need to drain this area, which means the area was R up and retain water. So now it doesn't make sense, but you add about my uh, maybe here, and then that's a different scenery completely. Okay, I can 15 signal here. There, let's check it out. Okay, what turned out to be a coin with a hole in it is a key. You know, <laughs> a fall thing, a fall thing to find here. That is the last thing I was expecting. A key. Oh my lord. Well, yell. <laughs> so, ah! so anyway, uh, the key. Okay, <laughs> let's keep going.
Okay, a large rock and the landing and a big boat. I see no tread inside. There we go. Post. It's about two to three feet apart. Uh, they were put there to assist the construction of the dike by leaning branch against it. So I can expect that thing, uh, can suppose that that thing was from there, maybe up to the rock. So there was a dugout here. And I don't know if it's vertical or circular, but the saw finished here and the rest was snapped off. Okay, I thought it was a buckle, but it might be... It's not that heavy. Maybe it's a lead seal. Or maybe not. <gasps> oh, very fragile, mind you. Oops, it's two pieces or something. A spring? It's probably a seal. Okay, uh, here I found some batten. Uh, strapping and there seem to be a bevel on this and the line a well, crisscross crisscross line and on this one they could be they could be circular blade I picked up this little piece four kilometers away at uh, Moses Point. And I don't um, know what it is. Maybe lobster trap. Is it to make barrels or something? Is there a nail there? No. Barrel strapping, maybe? And this. Okay, let's keep going. This place is very middle silent, but there's one indication of the spade work and filling. See all this little piece there? This is a build up. That is similar as a Banks Point. Whoop, fire. This place, this thing was burned down. So, do I see branches inside? There's one branches there. Whoops. Okay, it's obvious that there was a fire here. And there's only a short section of uh, multiple posts and angle posts and um, there is no metal 
beside the uh, twelve shot rifle um, and the spoon that I found behind in the sand bar, there's no metal. So it must have been burned and abandoned for the longest time. Um, and maybe the wave and the uh, rolling gravel and sand just cleaned up the place. Because uh, now we are to the bare original uh, clay layer and there's nothing to be found except the wood that was pushed in very deep in the mud and uh, survived the fire and now uh, exposed by the uh, erosion. Okay, the tide is rising and the wind is picking up. So time to go. And in the second part of this video, I uh, will show you the similarity between Danks Point and Monash Point that convinced me that this is an AK's inside. I noticed or with the different map Google that the sandbar is moving inward and the uh, shore is receding to get more damage the old marsh and traces of things I saw this year might not be there next year. That's how fast the erosion is going. Okay, enjoy. Okay, can you see the regular spade work? Two spade width. Branches. Okay, for what I've seen in the Danks Point, this is very similar. It's a bit wider. I think it's also a bit later. Um, it's probably not built by the villager of Beaver, the village itself, but by the refugee. There were a large amount of family who arrived late. Um, they might have built this as a last attempt and eventually uh, a lot of them moved to uh, PR, Il Saint Jean de Time. Question 
is this dike was used as a, a boat repair boat landing and as a fishing station I have no doubt that the Acadian or even later the English settler uh, used this place as a boat landing um, but uh, the access is only uh, possible at a uh, very high tide. In the last search, I found no trace of any rivet or copper nail or iron nail, no trace at all of a boat construction, but it will make sense. And there's a road uh, access to the forest right behind where probably all the dike posts also came from. Question, how big was the dike? Well, I don't know. Um, I thought at first it was just a water for a slip, but when I came back and I look at the satellite picture, it seemed to be curving and there's an outline on the uh, uh, picture from the satellite. So next year I will have to go back there and see if I can search that line to, to see what it is. And if it was completed, uh, this die go toward the water and therefore she'll return back to the shore. So maybe someplace further uh, down the coast, I will see uh, this return, which I cannot see at this point from the satellite picture. Uh, many drain lines should lead to a inland channel and then right after should be the dike and there should be some trace of posts uh, uh, on the water. Hey boss, boss. Hey boss, hey boss. It was a nice year. Hey boss, it was a nice year. Many trips. Oh, oh yeah. yeah.